I hope you're all well. So Cricket have once again released this week's Craft Along theme and the theme is stockings. So I'm going to do three stocking inspirations for you today. The first is with pre-made stockings, then we're going to make our own stocking and then we're going to make a stocking for Sir Bisley. Two pre-made stockings and I'm going to put these print and cut images onto them. These are from Design Bundles. I will link to them in the description below. And we're going to be using printable iron-on dark today. I don't need to do anything with these images. I like them exactly as they are. Printable iron on dark, you do not need to mirror, but you do always want to make sure that you read the instructions. We're then going to send it to print on our inkjet printer. I'm going to turn my bleed off, that's just my personal preference, but it's up to you. Printable iron on dark, we're just going to browse all materials. We're going to come down to iron on, and then we can choose printable iron on dark. So I've got a pre-made stocking here and we're just going to decorate it with our principal iron on dark. So I've got my baby easy press and it's set to 160 degrees Celsius and we're just going to come in and just preheat our stocking just to take away any moisture and it will also help the HTV to adhere better as well. So I've got one of my iron on dark principles so I'm just going to come in and just remove it. Depending on the design, it can be an easy removal, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, but because it's not sticky, if it all kind of folds over on each other, it's fine, it's not a problem. And we can also use our weeding tools to help us. Now there's no carrier sheet on these so we are going to want to come in with a heat protection sheet. I'm using my Cricut heat protection sheet but you can use a Teflon sheet. So I've got my Easy Press set to 160 degrees Celsius for 20 seconds. And I'm just going to apply a small amount of pressure. So I'm going to turn my stocking over. There's nothing on here so I don't need a heat protectant sheet and we're just going to heat it up from the back again 160 degrees Celsius for 20 seconds and this will really help to adhere our iron on. second stocking we're actually going to make one we're going to make it from scratch I've got some beautiful fabric that I want to use so the first thing we're going to do is go to images or projects let's go to projects and we're just going to type in stocking but as I say you can use images as well see there's quite a few projects some of these like this one are just the decoration so they're not the stocking and you can see there it says you'll need a stocking some of the other ones are actually stocking patterns like this one and this one and we're actually going to use this one today pattern comes in like this the first one we're going to do is delete the M we don't need that and then we're just going to come in and we're going to ungroup our stockings now there's four stockings here we at the moment only want one so we're going to get rid of the other three I actually want to resize it so I'm going to make it 20 inches in height and you can resize it however you like I'm then going to duplicate it and I'm going to flip it. So we've got one facing one way and one facing the other. This is really important if you're working with a patterned fabric. I'm going to come in and we're going to duplicate each of our stockings again. And we're also going to change the color to white. I'm going to come in again and duplicate it and I'm going to change the colour, let's just choose a peach 
And again, with the other one, I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to change the color. So I've now got three layers of a left and a right sock. The reason for this is one of my layers, so my black layer, for example, will be my front and my back in my pattern fabric. My two whites will be my lining, and then my two peaches will be my fusible interfacing. Then go to make it. You can see that we need a 12 by 24 mat for all our layers, and we can also then go to continue. One and two, they're going to be the outside of our stocking, so our pattern fabric. So we're just going to go to popular. You can see we've got a cotton cut setting and we've also got a medium fabrics like cotton setting. I'm going to choose that one and I can use my rotary blade. Exactly the same for mats three and four. They're going to be my cotton lining. So I'm going to use exactly the same settings. Mats five and six are going to be my interfacing. So I'm going to browse all materials and I'm going to go down to fabric. And then I'm going to come all the way down until I can find fusible interfacing. I'm obviously using my makeup and my rotary blade today, but if you've only got an Air or an Air 2, you want to cut fabric, you absolutely can, but you're going to want to make sure that you obviously add some stabilizer to the back of your fabric, and you're going to use either your fine point blade or your fine point fabric blade. So the first thing we need to do is add our fusible interfacing to our lining and you want to make sure that it's shiny side down onto your fabric. I've got my easy press set to 305 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 seconds. So we've got our lining which has now got the fusible interfacing on it and that's on the back. I've just got some bias binding here which I've made six and a half inches and I've just folded in half and this is going to be my hanging tag. So I want to put it against the inside of my lining. I'm just going to do it by kind of sight but I think there's about right where I want it to sit. I've then got the outside of my stocking and I'm going to put it so it's right side to right side. So I want the outside right side to my inside lining. So we've then got the wrong side of our fabric and we've got our interfacing. We can then come in and we're just going to pin along the top here and you want to make sure when you're pinning that you get your tag in there. So we've then got our other piece which has got our lining and our interfacing. We don't need to put a tag in this one, we only need a tag for one side. Again we've got our front or our back side piece of fabric and we're going to turn that over again. You want to make sure that it all lines up. And again, we can pin across the top here. So we're just gonna come in and top stitch along this edge. So I'm just gonna go forward a little bit and then I'm gonna back stitch a little bit as well just to reinforce it. And then we can just go forward. And you want to just go at the pace which you feel you can go at. 
We're not doing anything fancy, we're just coming in with a straight stitch. And when we get to the end, we're going to back stitch a little bit again just to reinforce it. We can then come in and remove our excess thread. So we're going to go forward a little bit and then we're going to go back. And then we're going to come forward again. And this time we've got the tag on this one, so we're going to go over the tag. And then we're just going to back stitch just a little bit, back over the tag and then forward again, just to make sure that the tag is nice and secure in there. And then if we open them up, you'll see we've got two front pieces and they are attached to our lining and our interfacing. And we've also got our tab here all nice and secure. Then what we need to do is put them on top of each other. So again, we want right side to right side. So we're gonna keep this one as it is, and we're just gonna turn this one over. So the most important thing to match up is these two seams you want them to be sat directly on top of each other. If they are perfectly matched up, but you find that maybe just a small portion of the stocking is not lined up, that's fine, don't worry about that. You're just going to follow the inner line around the stocking. It is more important that this seam here is completely lined up. Before you do anything else, once that's lined up, you want to then come in with your pins to make sure that that does not move. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to sew all the way around. And you want to make sure that the outside is completely sewn up. And then we're going to come all the way around and do the lining and the interfacing. However, you want to leave an area gap because we need to be able to turn it inside out. So you want to work out where you want your non-sewn piece to be. I'm going to do it this area here. So I'm then just going to go around and I'm going to pin everywhere else except for my opening area. So because I've decided to have my opening here, I'm going to start my stitch here. I'm going to come all the way around. I'm going to come into the front and the back part of my stocking. I'm going to follow it all the way around in one continuous stitch. I'm going to keep coming down and then I'm going to stop at the other side of my opening. So that is now all sewn together and we've obviously got our opening here. Now before I turn it inside out, I'm just going to go around with a pair of scissors and I'm just going to trim away all the excess. This will just allow the stocking to sit nicely. I'm then going to come in and I'm going to turn everything inside out. So this is what our stocking then looks like. So at this point I like to go back in with my easy press and I like to press everything. So with our opening, we obviously want to close this. So you're just going to fold it over and then the other side so that they kind of pucker up onto each other. And then you can either hand stitch it or you can machine stitch it. Because it's going inside of our stocking, it is our lining. We're not going to see it. I'm just going to machine stitch it quick. Then all we're going to do is we're going to come to where we had that middle stitch. And we're just going to start feeding our lining 
into our stocking. And there we go, we've got ourselves a really sweet, lovely little stocking. Third and final inspiration project, we are going to create a stocking for Sir Bisley. Now, I, this is going to be a community project. The link to it is in the description below. So you'll be able to make this if you have a cat and you want to make a stocking for them. It's clearly in the shape of a fish. You can change the sizes if you want to. Again, these are all exactly the same. There's no need to flip these. These are all the same. And I've just separated them into two sections of three. So we've got our outside pieces, our lining, and our interfacing. So I've got four pieces cut out in fabric. I've done it all in this green fabric. So you can't tell the difference between the lining, the front and the back. So we're just gonna choose which pieces we're gonna use. And then I've got two layers of my fusible interfacing. So I'm going to choose one of my green fabric layers and I've got my interfacing. I'm going to place it shiny side onto the fabric. I've got my Easy Press 2 set to 305 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 seconds. So for this one, it's my tail that's going to be my top. So again, we're doing fabric to fabric. And of course, if there was a pattern, it would be pattern to pattern. Uh, but there's not, so we can put it any way round. Again, I've got some bias binding for my hoop tag. And I'm just going to fold that in half. I've done it at a length of six and a half inches. And then I'm just going to come in and place it in between there. I'm then just going to pin along the top here. So in terms of sewing, I'm just going to sew up to the curve edge. So I'm going to sew all the way around here and then up to about here again. The same with this one. We've got our fabric and then our interfacing. So we can then place it fabric to fabric. And of course, this time we don't need a tag. And again, we're just going to sew along the top. So we want to come in and add our pins. So I just want to show you that when you open it up, you can see that we've got an issue here. And of course we've got to lay them on top of each other so that's not going to work. So I'm just going to go in with my unpicker. This happens, you know, it happens. So you actually want to don't stitch any further than that top kind of turn. So you're just going to stitch from here to about there. So we've got this one here with our tab. Now you'll notice that around the fin is going to be a little bit tricky. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come in, we're going to lay them on top of each other to begin with. And remember we're laying good fabric to good fabric. Once again we want to make sure that those seams line up. Okay, perfect. So this side is going to be nice and easy. So we're just going to come in and pin it. I'm going to leave my opening down at the bottom here. So with this side, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to follow the curves around. So we've got the curve that's curving around here. So we're going to pin those. And then exactly the same on this side. We've got this curve here as well. So we want to follow that round. And then we can just stitch all the way around this piece. So it's just these two tail areas that are going to be a little bit tricky, but just follow the edge around. That 
is now all sewn up and I've gone round and I've trimmed all the excess so we can now come in and turn it inside out. So I'm just going to put my hand in and I'm going to grab all the way to the other end and then we can just start pulling it through. So once again at this point I'm going to go in with my easy press and I'm just going to press it all. We can then come in and either hand stitch or machine stitch this shut. Once we've closed the end up, we can then come into the centre area and open that up. And we're then going to feed through our interfacing and our lining into the outside of our stocking. Bisley's beautiful fish stocking is now created so I can come in and I can decorate this however I want. I'm just going to do uh, some printable iron on dark and then I may do some text as well.